Yeah, man. We just roll. We're rolling like some early 2000 kids at a fucking rave. Look at my pupils. Look at my pupils. Man. You just gotta be tough. You gotta be tough. You can't be weak. You gotta be tough as nails. Tough as nails. I'm tough. You gonna you gonna hit the nail on the head? Nailed it. Like, how long do you think you're gonna be tough? Like old when you gotta protect your house when you're like eighty. <clears throat> yeah, oh hey. No copper cup club today, but we got the red solo cup club today. Welcome to another episode of the Bernie Dyke Podcast, Keegs and Coda, number thirty. Thirty. We're in the house. We're making numbers. 30, 30. It's been a couple days. You guys haven't seen us in a few mm, weeks. No. And you know how many people were, dude, messages, messages, not, I know. not one. I didn't get anything. Nobody cared that we were gone. <laughs> so I'm They're back. Like, Wait, you guys do a podcast? That's how fast they fall off. They're like, oh, fuck, I forgot you do that. It's been a week and a half. Oh, yeah. We still haven't listened to the third one. Sorry. We still haven't listened to the other 29 of them. So we're back. Thank you for everybody that does listen to them. We have been getting downloads. We have, uh, so somebody's either just storing them on their phone or they're actually listening to them out there. <laughs> either way, we appreciate it. Numbers are numbers. And, uh, and it gives us a reason to come in here and just blurt out complete bullshit, as you are very aware of. So, yes. We're here. It's uh, Thanksgiving week. I just coming off a yeah. of vacation. That's why I haven't been around. And Dakota has been busy Busier with than ever. first place champions. Oh, yeah. Daughters had the uh, the cheer competition, their first cheer competition. Shout out, girls. Five years old, going on six years old here soon. They took first in their competition, and we are going to state, baby. First place. Yeah. Going to state. I'm being one of those cheer dads. I always wanted to be like a wrestling dad because, like, you know, my, my parents were wrestling parents. I you wrestled. could always get them into jujitsu still. Yeah, yeah. Then we got tournaments and stuff. But, yeah, now I'm going to be a cheer dad now. And gymnastics. They do gymnastics, too, which I'm actually real excited about that. I don't, you know, there's all-day events. You got the cooler. You're allowed to feed Dude, a bunch of kids. They're so I mean, adorable, too. That picture of them with the with the first place thing. Oh, so yeah, much yeah. sass, dude. dude. I looked the in the picture, sass. and I just started laughing because I was just scrolling. Because you're one of, like, four <clears throat> or five friends that their kids are into that, uh, either the gymnastics or the yeah. cheer. So I see it all the time. I'm just right. kind of scrolling, and I was like, oh, I see a first place in there. We got to check this out. Who's winning? Yeah. These guys over here. We're winning. So... Congratulations, girls. Good job. I think I might have screamed fuck yeah in the middle of a bunch <laughs> of kids. I was like, fuck yeah! I mean, yeah! Is it, like, how does that go at those cheer competitions? Is it pretty rowdy? Uh, in between, yeah. So, like, when when the teams come out, they do, like, one cheer where it's, like, them chanting their cheer. And they're supposed to get, like, crowd reactions. So we were yelling back, purple and black, unicorns attack. <laughs> oh, so and you got to get in on it. Yeah, we did. They get that. That helps with their points. They're scoring. Oh, and man. then uh, and then they do like a dance routine one type thing. You know, like a normal cheer you see with like the montage of music and whatnot. Y'all um, roll in with a squad. Oh yeah, yeah. We had like you know, all the, got a bunch of parents and stuff there. Mm. Yeah, I got some of the aunts and uncles, grandparents, whoever. You got a we squad had up. just just for our you know my two girls. We had shit. There's probably like eight or nine of us there. Oh wow. Yeah. I used to get embarrassed when my mom would scream out a basketball game, so I can just imagine, like you screaming, probably gets, gets, <laughs> gets attention. You going all bear mode up there? Yeah, I don't know. When Pop I when bear. I played like football and wrestling and stuff, I didn't even hear anything. I don't even remember hear, like hearing people. The only thing I ever heard was my oldest brother Dave would do this. He does this whistle, like you know, grabs the lip, oh, and yeah. super loud, and like the- I could pick that out of a crowd anywhere. But other than that, it's never really. Uh, I don't know. Never hear too much my coach yelling at me and that's about it well like i was asking you before because you're one of those big tough guys so what's it like to be tough as nails Is that what's, what you want what's to it know, gonna Keegan? be like when you become an old person and you got to protect your house oh are man. you gonna move into one of those communities where you don't got to worry about it once you know all no. the kids are gone you ain't gonna deal with it i don't think so y'all can I'm, swing and do all really... the freaky stuff old people do up there <laughs> Passing around the decades-long uh, gonorrhea. Man, you've waited this long. It's time to share. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know, man. I would just imagine I always got dogs and weapons, you know? That's what I've always done. That's what I always do. Yeah, man. That's... I'm, like a, I'm like a fucking paranoid person when it comes to, like, you know, I got my girlfriend and the two girls in the house. Yeah, but no, I'm saying when you're 80. 
Yeah, yeah. No, now, I'm saying, I'm gone. saying, even right now, like I'll get up and like walk right the now, parameter yeah. and check the windows. You and don't want to like trying to come in my house right now is probably. I got little muskrats running around this thing all the time. You gonna get you Achilles bit? Yeah, you can. Well, you're just gonna <laughs> let me know where you're at. That's all I need to know. But when you're old, like you're not spry anymore, so you got to know like how you gonna protect your how you gonna protect your situation. You can only move into so such a safe neighborhood, right? You, you know. That sometimes you move into the safe neighborhoods. That's where they prey on, right? Because they know you're yeah. there. So what happens when you're 80? Do you, like I said, do you go to a place where you know you got the protection, or are you gonna still try to tough it out? Mm. I mean, some That's of these kids one. coming up, I feel like they you seem gotta pretty try and soft, bro. They seem pretty soft. Like I, I'm, I'm willing to take my chances. I'm, I'm gonna be like, uh, I'm gonna be like Clint Eastwood in Gran Torino. I'll be like that grumpy old dude in my garage all the time. You want even not to shoot him though. <laughs> if you yell at some of these kids now, they'll just start crying. Little bitches. So d- to prove that point, because this is just a generation gap thing, you know, because people back in the day that were alive, you know, 45, 50 <laughs> that, years that ago. Alive. When they were born 40, 50 years ago, they were born in a little bit tougher time. Yeah. They had to fend for themselves. They, Absolutely. You didn't take shit. You just got stuff done. And it's always the little one. It's always the little fiery one that you got to yeah. watch out for. They're the, they, they've been dealing with it the longest. So I read this awesome – I saw it like two days ago, and I read it again today, so it kind of caught my attention. But uh, this 82-year-old elderly lady, very small, about my mom's size – um, she's a, I guess she's a weightlifter. She works out. She's, you know, she's fit, which is very important for everybody, but especially when you're getting older, and this is mass. where, this is where this comes into play where some old people wouldn't even have been able to get to the phone to alert the police that an intruder was trying to get into their home. She this lady in? tried, yeah, she had a guy trying to, like, he was kind of creeping around her property. So when she went to go check out what was going on at the door, he tried to come up to the door to get in. And she shot him down and said no. And he tried to force himself into the house. And when he did, like I said, most old people maybe would have fell down, tried to get out of the way to get to the phone. Not this lady. She's, she works out. Bro, she, work she's out. got the muscles. She's got them old school muscles. So she... So she so this old dude or this dude tried to be an E on old Margaret. And what happened? What Margaret, happened next? Margaret weren't playing that. Yeah, <clears throat> she, she went for the first thing that she could get her hands on, which was uh, um, a TV tray. She gave him a quick two like piece a, with the TV tray. Wait, wait, like a like like one of the trays that sits on like an ottoman type thing, or no. was it like a stand up like dinner? You know, it wasn't a breakfast a dinner, tea like tray, a, like a dinner table th- type thing. You know what I'm talking about? Like the one with the legs on it. That you know, it was the leg right. one. That's the one she you just do hit the him most with damage. it like an axe. Yeah, that one's putting out like four or five percent damage. Where the one with the little <laughs> tray, you're only gonna get like a half a percent. <laughs> you're not gonna get the full percent off that. Right. So she got him with. The, I think she got him with the old, the old school one. Yeah, the like real wood, like oak. The oak one, the ones <clears> that yeah, yeah, I have them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So she clocked him with that. Got him pretty good, I guess. Got him on the ground, and she beat on him for a bit. Probably grabbed Fucking remote controls and shit. Margaret was getting in there. I don't know what her real name is, but she was getting We're busy. Calling Margaret. So then, quick thinking. She's smart. She knows. All right, you know, maybe I might be a little bit outmatched here, but I know I got him down. So she runs to the bathroom. And she gets herself some shampoo. She comes out with the shampoo, gets it all in his eyes. Ooh, she maced, she maced him with the soap. <laughs> she covered this dude with shampoo and then alerted the police. And when they got there, they had to take him to the hospital. He, he couldn't see, <laughs> and he was trying to get up and slipping and shit, I bet. He was clean, though. Oh, he was clean. Smelled great. Smelled great. Pert Plus, you know what the old people use. Oh, man. She whooped his ass, bro. <laughs> I, That's fucking awesome. Go, hey, you fucking go, Margaret, I should know, or whatever your real like, name is. I should, I'm going to have to, you know what, on the next episode, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go find her name because I feel, I should just Google it. Because I feel bad that I'm not giving her her real credit. Right, right. 82. But knowing ahead. her, knowing her, she probably doesn't even want that credit. She's probably a fucking badass. She's like, don't, hey, don't talk about me. You already know what happens. Willie Murphy. Her name is Willie. Her name is Willie Murphy. She uh she's a bodybuilder. Dude, she ain't very big. Hmm. But again, she got the, you know, there she is. What state what state was this in? Uh hmm. Let me get it up right here. Willie Murphy. Beats home intruder so badly he had to be taken to the hospital. Fuck yeah. Let's oh, go, Oh, she's Willie. an award-winning female bodybuilder. Let's go, Willie. Turn the tables, literally. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> See, that's what they write. They got writers. They just turn the tables on them. Home intruder. Beat him so badly. 
after he broke into her house that he had to be taken to the hospital. Willie Murphy said she was getting ready for bed in her home in Rochester, New York, around 11 p.m. when she heard a pounding on her front door. Heard a pounding. She heard it. So she went out there. It was a man. He was outside saying, please call an ambulance because I'm sick. I'm sick. Murphy told... And Murphy ended up calling the, the call police to get the, the man <laughs> the help he requested, but she didn't let the man inside, which caused him to become angry, Ooh. she said. I hear a loud noise, and I'm thinking, what the heck? What was that? The young man is in my home. He broke the door. Murphy, who said she can deadlift 225 pounds. Is that her right there? Yeah. And she's 82. 82. Get the fuck out of here. And she recently won she a weightlifting 52. competition earlier this year, was shocked, but unperturbed look at that my word came back right again. yeah she was unperturbed <laughs> he picked the wrong well, house to break fucking... into she said so this is in new york by the way it was in rochester new york she grabbed the first thing she could a table i took that table and i went to working on him and guess what the table broke she's <laughs> so wait, it says a table or is, is it a dinner like a it like was, a, i a think TV it was a little tv table. dinner table but <laughs> I don't know. She's a she's a fucking champion oh, weightlifter, bro. Maybe me. she grabbed an actual fucking table and blasted this dude. The intruder immediately fell on the floor, but the beatdown didn't stop there. When he's down, I'm jumping on him, Murphy told him. Wham! She demonstrated how she stomps on him. And then she ran into the kitchen and grabbed a bottle of baby shampoo. Well, baby shampoo they ain't got the no burn in it, right? No, no, no. Hey, there's a there's a funny thing about that. It's not no tears. Because the word tear and the word tear are spelt the same, it's actually no tears. Like it won't, their hair won't tear from using it. A little double entendre misdirection there. For real? Fuck yeah, fucking Johnson and Johnson, bro, sucking a bunch of Johnson. Suing. I just saw that if you were using baby powder, there's a lawsuit. Ooh. For okay. Real? Like talc lawsuit. I just saw that. So she ran in, grabbed the yeah. Grabbed the shampoo next to the phone. I don't know why the shampoo was next to the phone, but <laughs> she said that's where it was. There's a bottle of baby shampoo on the table, said Murphy. I grabbed the shampoo, and guess what? He's still on the ground, in I his face, I bet all you, over I it. I bet you Willie, 82 years old, probably still has a house phone, and maybe she's got, like, her grand... It is. Maybe it her, is a house phone. Maybe her grandkids right come over, and she maybe they're small, and she bathes them in, like, the big kitchen sink, you know? That's maybe. Not, that's, not out of, that's not out of this. I just love the quotes, like, when it's her talking. There's a bottle of baby shampoo on the table, said Murphy. I grabbed <clears> the shampoo, and guess what? He's on the ground still, Blow. in his face, all over it, the whole thing. He's trying to get up, and he's pulling, and I got the broom. <laughs> and he's pulling the broom, with the broom, and I'm too. hitting him. I'm hitting him with the broom, hitting him. Guess what? He wants to get back the heck out of there. She, he wants to get the heck out of there. I, re yeah. I had really done a That's number great. on that man. I'm serious. I think he he was happy when he went in the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. Hey, don't fuck with the Willie Rochester, all right? The cops were taking selfies with her and stuff. I just thought that was absolutely hilarious. You know, and... That's a fantastic story. I, when you get old, you got to be able to move quickly because you don't know what's going to happen. And that's why I always preach to everybody, please take care of your body, go to the gym, go for walks, go <clears> do all that stuff, try to make yourself a little bit uncomfortable. At that point, that way, in a situation when you are uncomfortable, you can do something. It's uh, it's actually one of the best things you can do to extend uh, your longevity, your life, is uh, weightlifting. Having more muscle mass is, is scientifically proven to Isn't help extend your life. Isn't it crazier, though, that we all know that? That we yeah. all know that if you exercise, that you will feel yeah. better and that yeah. you'll be healthier, and we still don't do the same. And we all know that if you drink a little too much, it's not real good for you. And if you yeah. smoke, it's not good for you. Don't smoke. Yeah. I mean, you know, every once in a while. <laughs> no, don't smoke. Smoke three cigarettes at once. Smoke. Doesn't feel good, does it? <laughs> it's probably a sign. It's probably a sign. But no, for real, when you get older, you want to be able to move around. Because, like, check this out. If you were living in China recently... I'm just going through some news because, you know, I'm bored and I like news. This is how China warns you. Like, at least in the United States, I, I like to think that they would try, which we are precautionary because when we launch uh, rockets and stuff like that, we try to do it near the coast. That way any debris that falls out. Right. We don't, we don't get, have we don't to get deal one of those it. system emergency fucking texts yeah, on our phones and we shit. Try, we try to avoid all that shit. So, but when you're in China and they don't, Th that's not their problem 
and they're going to launch from areas that they feel they want to launch from for whatever reason it is. They can do whatever the fuck they want. And it's over residential areas. Uh, this is this is what happened. China warns residents before rockets crash down from space. Before the government launched a long March 3B rocket from whatever satellite launch center on Friday evening, this on last Friday, yeah. it warned the residents with a notice that read, if you see any flying objects falling from the sky, please adjust your location to avoid <laughs> quickly to avoid any harm. <laughs> Fucking assholes. Oh, my God. Hey, by the way, shit's already on the way in the air. If you see any debris, you need to move. If you see any falling objects from the sky, please adjust your location adjust. quickly. Dude, there's houses hey, that got adjust hit your location by for rocket. Me, sir? Like pieces of rockets fell on people's houses, dude. That's fucking nuts. I don't think anybody died, which that goes to show you Chinese people take care of themselves good enough to move quick when the shit hits the fan because we would have at least like... <laughs> Hey, we got to do this over here. We're going to pay you out to we'd, get out of this area. We'd, so we'd be we can suing launch our rocket. government is what we'd be doing. Yeah, they'll kill you over there. Yeah, over there they're like, fucking, you don't have any say in your government. Shut the fuck up. Adjust your location, sir. You know, but should we just, I want to just get this out of the way from talking about breaking stuff. Okay. And, and uh, designs. Is it what you told me you didn't want to, or you were like, I'll save it for the podcast. I don't want to tell you yet. Oh, oh, yeah, actually, yeah. No, Is that what real. you were talking about? No, it wasn't, but th thank you for reminding me. I had to break into somebody's house today. Kinda. Good thing it, I wasn't, don't know good thing it wasn't old Willie Rochester. It wasn't Willie. It wasn't Willie. That's what I wanted to segue from Willie. I'm, I'm sorry I jumped into the Chinese. But I did a good segue there. That was, I'm, I'm bad, and like, you know, that was like, I got it on the third, you know, third strike. Yeah, yeah it's all good, and everything's no, good. No, but, um, yeah, so a buddy of mine, or my customer, he needed a... Uh, a heater today at a job site and i know i don't talk about work very often here but uh this is a friend of mine and he's a customer of mine had to bring that heater though and i had to bring the heater <laughs> and he let me know last night we're gonna do it early i had i had a appointment at noon and all morning i'm calling him i put everything on order to go get it for him and he's not answering and it's not like this guy not to answer i've known him for a while so i gave him three hours which is a long that's, time. That's that's a um, a generous amount of time. Right? Three hours is a long time. Like, if you didn't text me back in three hours and it wasn't anything pertinent, and I was like, hey, what up, dude? You no, doing I called today? him like five times. And you didn't text me, I wouldn't care after called three hours. called him five hours. times. But yeah, if you got some plans. Like, like every 30 minutes, I called him, and you know. I text him, and I called him on Facebook Messenger, because sometimes he breaks his phone, <clears throat> and when that happens, he doesn't have the phone, so you got to go through the iPad or whatever. So I text his wife, is his phone broken? She says no. I heard his alarm going off this morning. Everything's good. Okay. So after about I mean, the third she hour, know if he broke his phone right after that, though. Well, yeah, true. So after the third hour, I've got nothing else to do. So I drive up to his, I drive up to his house, because I'm like, maybe he's there. Truck's there. So I ring the doorbell. <laughs> I ring it, ring it, nothing. Pound the door, pound, 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 pound. Dogs are barking, nothing. Now I'm concerned. It's 11 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, I'd be a little concerned. Now I'm like, oh, I think my body, <laughs> I'm nervous I'm going to go see a dead body. Luckily, I had his garage code. I found it in my uh, text messages from him. And I got in there, and he was just sound asleep. You have earplugs in? No. Dogs barking, phone ringing, doorbell ringing. Phone, everything. Nothing. I had was, a he, was he up a little too late drinking a little too many soda pops? I think he was having too many soda pops. You know how some like some people in in the like West Coast East Coast thing like say soda, some say pop. Why don't we just say soda pop? I don't know. Some places just call it Coke. <laughs> yeah, they just call all of it Coke. You want a Coke? You're like, no, nah, I'll, I'll take a Dr Pepper. Okay, so you want a Dr Pepper Coke? Yeah, let me get you one of them Dr Pepper Cokes. <clears throat> you ever get like that kind of that fucked up where? You don't even know what's going on the next morning. You mean you just like wake up con in confusion? Yeah, like you're going. Yeah, I've had that happen a few times. Only once did I wake up like the next day and I'm like, some shit's going on. I was in the back of a vehicle singing. Mm. And I woke, like, I. Wait, oh, yeah, that's different. That's different than what I was. No, imagining. like, I was singing in the back of a vehicle, like, driving at like 6 a.m. And all of a sudden, like, mm. all of a sudden, I was like, Hey, where are we? 
<laughs> and they're like, we just left that store. We slept behind that store last night because we were all too drunk oh, to okay, drive home. Okay. And I was like, what do you mean? They're Things like, are starting to piece you, together for me here. Okay. You, you were singing in the back for the last 10 minutes. Like, you were awake when so, we all left. <clears throat> yeah, well, you probably woke up still in a drunken, confused state. Blacked and they put, out. And they put music on, and you just started No, no, no. Singing? I guess I got out of the vehicle, went to the bathroom, and got back in it. Okay. I mean, I could see that. I, could I was see still that. blacked out. I thought you meant, like, you just woke up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in guess, the back of a car Can singing. you guess what kind of poison can do that? Can I? What, you mean alcohol? Yeah, yeah this is a yeah. family podcast. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, it's not a family podcast. It, do, I mean, doesn't <clears throat> your kids listen to this podcast sometimes? We're like family, <laughs> but if you let your kids listen to this fucking podcast, then you might not be a great parent. Which is why my daughter is like, "There's kegs when she comes over." <laughs> no, one fifty one will do that to you. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that'll do that. It's the death. And by that, children, we mean the first original 151 so Pokemon. Or I got to come break in your house and make sure you're not dead. Yeah, man. Going a little too hard there, buddy. Which is fine. Just let someone know. You know, like the person who's supposed to be coming to your house the next day or meeting you somewhere the next day. Text them if it's four in the morning. Like, yo, up way too late. Had a rough night. Drop the fucking heater off. Here's my garage code. Throw it in there. I'll see you later. Yeah, I needed the credit card. Uh, I just needed the money. It was all about the money. <sighs> Ain't it always about the Benjamins, though? I don't know. Ask Elon. <laughs> hey, Elon, <laughs> Elon's got them Benjamins, dog. No, does he, though? Because after does. that little stunt with the Tesla truck mm, the other day, mm, he mm. dropped, in, in like two days, his personal mm. wealth Mm-mm. dropped like 760-something million dollars. Mm-mm. It was like 778, but <laughs> <laughs> he also got, within the first like three days, had 200,000 pre-orders. Yeah, because people are stupid. Oh, you don't like it? First of all... What did you say earlier? The, what did you call the it earlier? The body aside, the body aside, the the performance, which now not the $40,000 one, the $60,000 one's real dope, but the $70,000 one, the performance on that guy is outrageous. It is faster than uh, pretty much all the sports cars. Speeding bullet. Um, yeah, faster than a speeding bullet. Um, the but it cannot on thing, stop one when it hits the window. It could tow a 14,000 pound trailer. That's 17,000. Mm, numbers 17, are conflated. No, nope, no. Nope. What they said, 17,000. They said pounds. 15, but I read I read the actual article. It said 14. It said 17. <laughs> they wanted and to, then because you can do that's a 13. The, that's the can't you do 13, five in a regular truck? I mean, it just depends on the vehicle. Yeah. And they just did the little fucking I'm gonna pull this F-150 up the hill. Mm-hmm. Bullshit. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And there's a lot of confusion with the whole bulletproof thing too, because the body is bulletproof. They shot it with a nine millimeter from ten meters away, so from thirty feet away, they shot it with a nine millimeter. I was gonna say, okay, another one of those. Actually, I think it was. It might have been that same night at that that party where I woke up in the back of the vehicle. Matter of fact, we locked keys in a car, right off. You ever try to break a window on the side of a car? You ever miss your mouse? Mouth? Mouse? Fuck. Okay, cool. Okay, yep. we'll just move on. Yep, we'll just keep going forward. <laughs> Dude, breaking a window on the side of a car is not easy. Mm-hmm. Like, I've thrown rocks at you it. S- you and see this crooked pinky? You need one of these, I guess, is what they say. Yeah. You need a window breaker. Or one of these guys right yeah. there. Yeah. That's not a knife. <laughs> as he cuts, like, all the fucking cords. All the cords like, it's, it's, like a, it's like a lightsaber. Oh, that's going to be fun in editing. <laughs> um yeah breaking windows is not the easiest thing to do so what i read because i saw him throw the ball up against the window and it okay, shattered do you know twice. what that ball was it was a big ass ball bearing it was a ball bearing i don't know how much it weighs but i want to say it was between probably five 20. five and eight pounds yeah it was probably pretty heavy that's gonna go through every window all the way straight through it at least it didn't fucking shatter and fly through that window well they said that what happened was is when he hit the doors with the sledgehammer before they threw the ball, it broke the bottom of the window. Mm, that and, makes sense. And then when he hit it with the thing, that's why it shattered. But, but I, I love Elon just, oh, let's just fucking throw shit at this car. I liked his attitude where he's like, oh, windows broke, and there's room for improvement, right? Good. 
I was like, yeah, perfect. That is room for improvement. There you dude, go. Seven hundred something the, million. The dude. body. Everyone doesn't like the body. I get it. Whatever. It looks like a fucking doorstop, right? It's like a triangle. It's aerodynamic as fuck, so it's a lot more efficient when it fights. And also, it looks like what I say earlier. It looks like a nineteen eighties back to the futuristic body style. <laughs> yeah, no, you said something way cooler earlier. Mm. That's the problem with my memory. Is it's dog shit. We always have to be recording. What the fuck? Always. Don't worry, it's coming. The future's coming. So, We're always going to be recorded. One design that... So, like, you see something ugly like that, and you're like, ah, don't produce it, you know, and, and we do it anyway. And then we have other designs that we see, and we're like, don't do that. There's already, like, when they said, hey, I think we can uh, remake dinosaurs. They recently said that, like, hey, I think yeah. we figured out how to do stuff. And then, like, they literally were like, dude, there's, like, four movies <laughs> explaining why not to do that i think five movies right maybe yeah. five is it five now it's probably six almost i think it's three jurassic parks and two worlds <clears throat> so again when we see things like boston dynamics with those stupid fucking dogs oh yeah and we're like yeah stop doing that you guys have, you guys have seen those dogs right they got like the arm on the back of them and like opens a door and open and it grabs the door handle twists it opens it lets like two of these other robotic dogs through and like their legs bend the same way like camels. The the knees or the elbows go back. The joints go back on it. Um, they're pretty fucking cool. And uh, everyone gets reminded of that Metalhead episode from um, what's Black called? Mirror. Black Mirror, there you go. Yeah, dude, that was one of the craziest episodes because that one was like, oh, we've seen that thing. Oh, yeah, we can go there. That's going to happen. So yeah. they... This is kind of a. This was not my favorite thing to read this week. Was uh, cops used the creepy robot dog from Boston Dynamics for the first time, according to records obtained by the Massachusetts whatever their publishing paper. The Boston Dynamics robot was leased by the Massachusetts State Police for a three month trial period, ending in November fifth. So or they've been ended. using this dog for whatever, and we do use robots. Do you remember the robot they used in Texas? Where they put a bomb to it and then they drove it in at the the dude that was like It sounds familiar. Was he like he was like a threat? Yeah, it was obviously. a standoff. They were doing a standoff, but I don't think he had anybody, but instead of going in and risking us getting shot, they just strapped this little bomb to a robot and Fuck just yeah. like walked it in and blew his ass up. Sorry, buddy. Welcome to Texas, brother. We don't play that game. But no, that that's kind of crazy, man. So Boston Dynamic, yeah. like basically they said they're using it for like Shit like that, going in and checking out hostage threats and situations and stuff like that, but they're not allowed to weaponize it. Yeah. And that they're going to have to start working on laws for stuff like Unders this. That's understandably so. I don't want to weaponize. But see, they, they weaponize that when you're talking about in Texas, they put a bomb on it. That's my point. But, I, oh, you know what? I guess if the, if the drone can't do, can't pull the trigger itself or detonate it itself, then maybe it's a... Yeah, but... It's like playing a video game. You're still, even if you can control it, that's still scary. You know what? I feel like less people will get shot that way because a cop's not scared for his life. I'm going to just pull the trigger immediately. He's like, okay, they're going to fuck the robot that's up. That's how it starts, bro. That's how it starts. That's how we it's all say that. And then they just decide, you know what? We're going to do this. And we're like, no, we're not going to do that. And they're like, but we can, yeah, we we're can just going to release like a thousand of these dogs and you're going to do that. I'm just going to fly drones into Yemen and fucking blow up a bunch of innocent people, whatever, you know? No, but for real, they could, like, yeah. You keep saying, like, well, it makes more sense to do this and it's safer realistically and it doesn't put, and then all of a sudden they have all this stuff that puts humans out of harm's reach. Well, the, the problem until is, they decide to turn it on us and say, hey, look, we're going to do this. And we say no, and then everybody realizes everybody that has to stand up on the front line to get to the people, you're not getting to those people. You're not fighting any people. Yeah. There's no, hey, we're not going to do this. You know, people, that's my family on the other side of that line. I'm not going to fight them. That's not happening at all. Are you saying wars are going to turn into battle bots? Why wouldn't, why wouldn't it? It makes sense. Because there's no... Right now, what stops us from having a civil war is, is if shit blows up, you, your family trickles into it eventually. Yes, you can yeah. find a bunch of people, but for the most part, this is America. Like, we're all supposed to be united. Mm -hmm. 
as much as we try to separate ourselves with different political parties and fucking sports teams and shit like that, we're supposed to be united. <laughs> Tribalism. And one of the things we're actually, I found out we're united, like diplomacy across the world, is on saving bees. Yeah, bees were just uh, about a month ago, have now been officially registered as the most important being on the planet. Yeah, so I've been, I listened to a podcast the other day, and I'm not going to get super technical about it, but basically what they were explaining was that bees end up with a bunch of different viruses. And that's, and whether it's from the different um, pesticides that are sprayed or, things that are left behind from ones that have already had the pesticides that form, right. you know get into the flowers and then you got different little termites and um yeah the little, little mites bugs and bacteria and, mites. and parasites and stuff so one of the things that the guy was explaining was if you think back to you know so how it works is like a honeybee goes out they used to have like a 9 day cycle they could go out for nine days. They could pollinate up to like a thousand flowers a day. So everything that you mm. were pollinating, everything that you're eating, every apple, almond, anything that it is, it's they were pollinating by, by these bees. And what they have are the when the nurse bees, which are the young bees that you know are getting growing up, their job is to take care of the baby bees. And when these diseases set in on these other bees that are supposed to be out pollinating, what happens is, is they, they bring it back. They get well, they get diminished to the point where, like right now, the average cycle is four days. Mm. So if you're only doing four days, that means that's less pollen. That means that's less pollen for the tribe to survive on and what they're doing. So what they do is they recruit the nurse bees, which the nurse bees are supposed to be protecting the baby bees. When the nurse right. bees go out and they go to pollinate that leaves the, the baby bees susceptible to getting bit by these mites and these things that have these right. viruses. So what this guy was, he figured out was if you ever look at like where a beehive typically is in like real forests, mm -hmm. is they're on a rotten tree, like in Winnie the Pooh. So always yeah. on a rotten tree. That's because rotten trees have mushrooms and mycelium. Yes. And, when they make extracts from the mycelium, and I can't remember what the mushroom was, but one of these mushrooms, what it does is it limits these viruses in bees. Yeah. So this guy is literally producing a bunch of these beehives. You're talking about Paul Stamets? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just incredible to see, like, that the mushrooms, like, bees knew, but, like, we don't have mushrooms growing all over the place. We do, actually. <clears throat> yeah, but when you get into areas like down here where the bees still have to survive. Right. And there's still going to be disease that gets passed. So he made these like crazy bee feeders that they put the uh, extracts in from the mushrooms yeah. that basically cure these viruses on these yeah, bees. Yeah, and uh, what, can you get them on his website? Um, yeah, he ha uh, I'll, I'll try to post it in the... He has one called... Uh, it's got all host. the... Armored ho host armor or something is one of them. That's for like your own personal um, like health benefits, different extra. Yeah, he's got like all this stuff on mushrooms. And like one of the things they were talking about was microdosing and talking about with uh, uh, psychedelic mushrooms and uh, psilocybin. psilocybin. And basically, they were explaining that when they they did it, a controlled experiment with these rats. Put them on a metal dish, rang a dong. Every time they ring the dong, they zap the rats. Oh, yeah, I've heard this. Just like 10 times or a bunch of times, and then they stop. So every time they'd ring it, the rats would like jump to try and avoid getting shocked, yeah, even though they coming. stopped shocking them. Yeah. yeah. So what they did is they macro dosed some rats, micro dosed some rats, and they didn't dose some rats. So a macro dose means you're getting hot, they're getting high. It's a large dose of the right. whatever. That those mice yeah they took the journey so those mice it was like eight times out of ten before they figured out okay we're not getting zapped anymore because they stopped zapping them mm -hmm. and they want to see how long the effect is the ones that weren't dosed at all it took over ten times the ones oh, that wow. were micro dosed two times to three wow and so the ptsd is the big thing that they're working on yeah. with it and another thing that they're saying is like all these tech kids that are using it coming up yeah they're there. saying silicon valley is just like uh insanely like 
taken over with microdosing mon mushrooms and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of fighters, kickboxers, Muay Thai guys doing it, boxers. They say that it's helping grow and further your like your stems and the cells and shit in your well, brain. Well, it it um it can actually help reopen neural pathways, which is there's nothing on this planet that we have found that can reform and reconnect and rebuild neural pathways because once you start to lose these neural pathways like someone who's a long time drug addict pill addicts opiates stuff like that they uh, actually diminish your neural pathways and then um what's it called uh cte also getting a lot of concussions mm-hmm. can cause a lot of problems with your neural pathways so mushrooms is literally the only psilocybin specifically and a lot of a couple other different types of mycelium um are the only things they've found that can actually regrow and rebuild these neural pathways, which is, as far as science is concerned, is is a phenomenon at this point. Well, and it's, I mean, one of the big ones they were saying was uh, people with tinnitus, so, like me, mm. where you can't, oh, yeah. and you, right? Me, you like a motherfucker. Too. So, Dude, mine, I don't know why mine has been so bad lately. Mine has my been fucking terrible, left, My dude. left ear, it's ringing right now. My left ear, sometimes I lay down mine at too. night. When I lay down at night... That shit fucking beep is all night long. It's worse than a cricket. I don't care if there's a cricket in the room. Well, when you get the when you get like uh, the weather just changed, so like I got kind of sick for a couple days and I I got all clogged up and I you know my chest was clogged, my ears are clogged. I do the ringing sometimes. Like I take the cough medicine or like Nyquil. I take that and I will sit on the couch and all of a sudden it's just unbearable. Like the sound Mm -hmm. is unbearable. You just have to be. Mentally, I'm used to so much chatter that I just move on. I, I keep going, you, but you know what for I've some noticed? people, it is destroying. What I've noticed is some of the things that help get rid of headaches, like vasodilators, like um, caffeine, um, or even like you smoking a cigarette is, can dilate your, your, um, your veins and stuff. It actually makes it a lot worse. So, like, I'll have, like, an energy drink or coffee in the morning, yep. and all of a sudden, like, 10 minutes later, it just is ringing louder. It's just rocking. Or if I take, it. if I, I, which I, I don't really ever take any type of medicine, any type of pills. Um, occasionally, like, I'll take an Advil or something, I got a headache, and all of a sudden, it just is ringing louder. Like you said, taking the NyQuil or something makes it so worse. So, they're saying that taking, if you're microdosing over a long amount of time, it can start to cure it because it's, it helps further those pathways and help us grow them back yeah. Okay. and uh yeah man i'm ready i'm ready because i guess i need to start micro dose and get rid of this earring uh, and i'm cool what is it? do you I'm, know what yours is from is it yours i mean o- uh, over I, the time a lot of loud music so and- i had no i had a uh, scar tissue in this ear anyway from all the ear infections when i was a kid and then i'm like swimming would you no, or do you just, just were susceptible them. to yeah, ear infections I had really okay. bad and then uh i got that i got that um i got an ear infection couple years back and i let it go and you know i think i've said it on this podcast before um, one of my sister's friends passed away from it literally about a month later after my situation oh, from the exact same thing he just had a baby he was very distracted and you know god bless his family and everything like that because it, it it you know that's tough dude i can't i don't wish that on anybody and yeah. same thing with me i was just kind of rocking it like I, I people were here i was just trying to get stuff done and Actually, the guy I broke in on today was the one that made me go to the hospital. We're pretty good friends, and he was like, dude, you don't look right. You don't sound right. Everything about you just seems off. And when yeah. I went in, they are like, you've had an infection for over a month. Yeah. Like, your ear is just toasted. Like, how long has this been like this? And I said, it was, I told him it's been about a month. And I didn't think I had an ear infection, but apparently I did. And... Um, the way I it got bad is I woke up in the middle of the night and it was just that loud pitch. Yeah. Like somebody was holding something over my head. And I thought an alarm was going off in my head lately. in the house and I was I woke up and I haven't been getting enough sleep lately and it's it's worse because of it, I think. But I will say I lost my hearing like two times before that. I just lo- it didn't ring, but I lost it mm-hmm. like ear pop lost it. I yeah. lost it on a, a plane ride and I just something had to pop else. My and you said that right now, I was like yeah, it sucks, dude. It's I don't wish that on anybody because it definitely. <clears throat> I mean, when they give you, like, I told them I was in extreme pain, they wouldn't even give me a painkiller, right? But they knew that it was so debilitating for your mental state that they offered me, um, what are they like mood, happy pills? I guess is the best way to put it. I don't know what they call mood <laughs> like stabilizers. Anti anxiety mood stabilizers. Antidepressants. Antidepressants. SSRIs. Are they SSRIs. 
I don't know. I didn't That's ask what, what they were. He just said, I'll give you some happy pills because I know you're going to be going through some stuff. And I was Damn. like, no, nah, I'm good on all that. But Mine, uh, mine, what it seems to be, well, I've played guitar. Like, I was in some bands here and there. I played drums. So I think, and been to a lot of concerts, especially, like, right up close. I think that has, in part, a lot of to do with ear or hearing damage that I've had. And one time in particular, um, fired a handgun with no ear protection, just once. And uh, my ears fucked. Because I'm, I'm cross. So I'm, I'm cross. Or, you know how I'm, many times I fire guns without no ear protection? I'm cross dominant. So I'll fire right handed with a handgun, but I use my left eye. So this ear is exposed to the gun right there. And this ear is tucked back away from it. So that that particular time, my ear rang really bad. I and must then, have had a bad acoustics or something. A year. Man, we used to just rip ARs. Shotguns, like I never. What size, what size guns though? And not only that, but a slide on a handgun's a lot closer to your fucking ear. Well, I got forties. Yeah, I got that's 40s. what that's what I did it with. Actually. I got a three fifty seven mag snub nose. And you shoot them with no ear protection? I have many times. Well, yeah. maybe that's why you got fucking tinnitus. <laughs> <laughs> no, fucking idiot. Oh, I want to give a shout out to my sister. Uh, both my did I talk about the air fryer last time we were on this? I didn't have I, it I yet, don't right? Know. I don't know. Did I have it yet? I feel like maybe. Well, if I didn't, my sister uh, India got me an air fryer uh, a couple weeks Shout ago. Shout out India, one of Dude, the coolest names. If you don't have an air fryer, and you got kids especially, and you got to do the chicken nuggets, the French fries, or any of that shit. <laughs> By first the way, of all, those, were, they, were they just here earlier? No. Those, when those I walked are in my, your house, those you, got are mine. Di- you got <laughs> those are my chicken nuggets. <laughs> you got dinosaur chicken nuggets no, and French vegetables, fries. Vegetables, vegetables. You're doing asparagus, yeah, broccoli, yeah. potatoes. Um, okay. Any of that stuff is amazing in the Hit air fryer. Little oil, little you season. can do. I do chicken wings, like the real deal chicken wings in there. Do you, do you use oil on them still in there? Or no. Um. No, have to. Yeah, I'm just saying, like even with veggies, you don't spritz oh, a little with the veggies oil, with the veggies. Little, little oil on them with the and some seasoning. Yeah, yeah. But like real chicken wings. Put the seasoning on them, do them up. Sometimes I like to coat them a little bit at the end with the sauce and then throw it back in for like two more minutes. You can do steaks, you can do cakes, you can do fucking everything. Steaks and cakes, boy. Bro, I'm telling you right now, this is not an ad for an air fryer, but if anybody wants to pay me from any air fryer company, I don't care what company you are, I will pitch that shit because it is amazing. Uh, and right. if you think about it, like any of y'all go camping, yeah, people go it. camping, right? And a lot of times there's plugins at the campsite, right? But y'all bring the grill with, the, st- with the stupid little propane. No, because sometimes you drive out. I'm talking like when you go to the campground, you bring the family. Yeah, yeah. You bring the grill. You know, if you got the camper, and too. the grill is cool, right? Bring the grill, especially if they got the grill, whatever. But if they got a plug in, bring one of these air fryers. They're no bigger around. They're not that huge. They're pretty tiny. Throw it in the truck. You can do most of your sides off one plug in, and it's super easy to clean. Use your dome. Bring an air fryer from home. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that thing's amazing. Thank you, India, for getting me that. They told me it was going to be a life changer. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Thank okay, you for getting yeah. me a gift. I appreciate it. That was super cool of you. And then, like. I'm going to air fry some things. Everything. I air fried the fucking TV remote the other day. Just see what it do. And then my other sister. I'm going to stand up real quick. Jordan. Got you the sweet shirt. Got me a new shirt for the podcast. I've been, I've been eyeballing this shirt for a while. Uh, on the internet I will say on the internet This is nothing against Jordan This is against their page Y'all make this thing look Like super vibrant Like y'all edited it You doctored it You photoshopped it a little bit so, They used Snapchat And then they just yeah, swiped over they To did the, the vibrant sw- one Yeah They did the sna- Yeah They got that it's still, on there. It's still pretty dope though But this is a super dope shirt Vibrant enough Thank you Jordan I love this shirt I've probably been wearing it too much. But <laughs> anybody else find some super dope shirts out there and they think I should be wearing it on the podcast, hit me up in a message. You can send it to me. Send it to me. All right, so we're not done yet, though. Don't, don't, just because I'm doing my thank yous now, don't think we're done. How long are we in right now? Oh, shit. How did I just segue on accident? I don't know. We're in. Uh-huh. We're going. I'm not worried about it. All right. Um, I, this is my little thing I wanted to ask you. Right. What's the best gift you have ever received, and what's the best gift you've ever given? That is a tough one. At my age, even, I can't imagine if you're older, the best and the best. Um, 
like like one specific single thing or just like what do I think in general is like one of the best or one that just stands out it doesn't have to be like at the end of the day the one but just a good one that you were like yeah their face that was the one I got him hmm. man that's a tough and one and if you can't think of one you gave what one did you receive that you were like that was the one man that's a, that's a hard question man that's a real good one uh, well, I'll tell mine. All right. And it, and and again, it might not even be like this. Might not actually be the final gift that was the best, but one of the best is actually the computer that we're using right a stand now out. to record on. And um, I wanted a. Uh, I didn't. It was weird. My sister just moved out here. She asked me what I wanted for my birthday. I didn't. I, it never really been that thing where everybody got together. Like, all my family gives me stuff for my birthday, and they do things, but this was the first time my sister was like, well, what do you want? And if it's big, we can just work the... Pull in? Yeah, we'll work the numbers. And I was like, I like this $3,000 computer. (laughs) 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 No, but I had like like 1,800 or something like that saved up for it. I was was just saving the money up. It wasn't even a big deal. I was just putting a little chunk away every few weeks. Yeah. And when I hit the number, I was going to hit the number. But it like... Jumped jumped it by like five months, four months. Right, right. I mean, the, and that's give or take if anything happens. Yeah. Keegan breaks the shower. The shower. You know, anything like that. The that fucking, shit the, happens, break, dude. Does someone break the heater that's on right now? Because it's fucking hot. Oh, here. you hot, man? <laughs> I was cold and Crystal's been sick. It's all good. It's yeah, all good. Let Crystal not be sick. I'd rather about, sweat. I'd rather sweat. Think about what you think about it for a second. What you what, What's your gift? I'm um, listening. To, I'm still listening. You don't need to worry about the heat, bro. No, it is getting <clears throat> I don't know. For a gift, to me, I always just like things that are personal, things that are useful, things that I use a lot. Um, and you're, I know you're a big fan of shoes. A good pair of shoes is always a great gift. Mm-hmm. It's like, dang, now I got an extra pair of shoes that I didn't have before. That especially if they're good, they're comfortable, or they're for a specific use. Like a good pair of gym shoes. Like the shoes that only touch a parking lot and a gym and the inside of your house. Those are That's a great gift to me. Um, I've had some custom shoes made this, for me. This big-ass knife that I had right there. That's, that's useful as shit because I use that for all kinds of things at work and play. You never got a gift, though, that you were like... I can't believe they got me. Man, this. I mean, like, my first guitar, like, a, yeah, drum, that's a, good one. a drum set. I got a whole computer and, and some recording equipment as well uh, for my dad when I was 14, probably 15. I think I got a... Um, a couple years ago, we got a cruise. That's a good one. That one was really dope because I love Crystal's family, man. They're super fun. I mean, it just, sound, it's never, not, it just sounds um, like your gifts are more expensive than mine. <laughs> I've, never been, I've never been with them for, like five six seven days in a row you know what i mean like yeah, okay. i've been with them a couple days in a row but i'd never been with them for that many days in a okay. row and to to you know and that's your wife or i think i think we were married if we weren't married but we we, sh- we were married um when you go for that long with them and then you realize like the brothers you love them like you, right. you're more clear you're closer with them after like that was one of the best gifts because it was like it grew it like drew us all in very close yeah. um, you had an experience together my dad comes out every year which is really cool like we just went to monument valley that's where yeah, i, I was that. by the way on vacation and uh i posted some pictures on the page so we went up into utah we stayed at these cabins we went to monument valley it was uh <laughs> i've been through monument valley wow it's awesome and can i say like some of those little like cavern not even caverns they're just like pieces of like rock mountain whatever plateaus if they just had a section of those that we could do festivals in where you could project it onto the walls like all kinds of shit and have the acoustics blasting off those little caverns it's like a natural amphitheater oh my god dude we were up in some of those and it was just so incredible and and you're just looking at it and there's like a trailer (laughs) just a trailer over there and like that person's the only one that's really like living there And you just think to yourself, like, I know we're not allowed to let it get destroyed, but just, like, a little piece. Let us have a little piece to, like, have some fun. That's how it starts. It does start like that, but, man. Um, Going back to the cruise real quick, that actually was my graduation present was a a a seven-day Hawaii cruise. 
graduation. So I did. I did. That who was did you a, go with? That was a really uh, one of my buddies who had actually graduated the year prior to me and his parents. And a little tidbit that you know probably shouldn't tell because it's illegal technically, but it's it's over seven years. We're grandfathered in. Um, we got some fake IDs and we registered our crews under fake IDs. Dun dun dun. And then, so my 18th birthday was on the cruise, but it was actually my 22nd we got fake birthday. Yeah, come on in. Yep, um, get them. It was pretty fucking cool. That was cool Messed shit. Up. So that I guess that would be my best gift, my favorite gift that I received. My buddy went on a cruise when we were like 17, 18, and he got drunk on the cruise. I think he was 18. <laughs> And uh, he got super wasted, and on his way back to his room, this hot um, Span- Mexican, Spanish, I don't know. I wasn't on the cruise, so I'm just trying to remember. It's been years. I'm trying to remember what he – she was some type of Latino female, walked by him, with, and she had a nice butt, and he whoop, ah, cupped Ooh, it he on the way bad. bad. And he was – yeah, he was wasted. And then, and then he, like, went in his room and crawled up on the top bunk, and I guess he was staying in the room with his dad. And then, like, next thing you know, I guess, like, her dad came down and was like, bah, 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 bah. Oh, shit. and, like, my boy was out already. He passed out. So his dad got up? His dad got up. <laughs> Answered the door. That's good. <laughs> and then my friend said the next thing he remembers is getting pulled off the top bunk. Like, by his dad or by her dad? His dad. Yeah. And good. his dad right. was getting the business to him, like, good. you fucked up. Good. Like, you can't do that. And I remember him coming home and telling me. Yeah, it was pretty great. Like I was like, man, you're that's bad. Yeah, shame we, um, on you. Women don't deserve that just because they have a voluptuous hiney. <laughs> we actually, uh, we we actually brought <laughs> we actually brought weed. We flew it over <laughs> over to Hawaii. Brought some pot with us. Hit it. Got it on through. I don't think you went through customs because it's Hawaii. But yeah, anyway, no, you pretty strict. Probably did. Um, and got it on the cruise ship and smoked some joints in the back of the cruise ship throughout the seven days. See, that's we were there. sketchy. You just need them pens. And well, we didn't have them then. We didn't have those in 2007. Yeah. See, when we and went, then, um, and then also the pens were check available. this out. I had flown. I had gone on and off the boat a bunch of times, which I don't think it matters on the boat, but it does matter on the plane post 9/11. Um, the day we were heading back, we were like, we should probably check our bag, make sure we don't have anything we can't bring on the plane on our mm. carry-on. And I had my knife in there, which I had no idea about. Well, not, not this knife, obviously, but I had a big-ass knife with me. And um, I was like, damn, I had this on the plane with me on the flight here. I've been in and out of custom or in and out of the, the cruise ship with it, which I don't know that that matters or not. But, yeah, so then I threw my knife away before we got on. See, like those pens, they don't, uh, they don't go off in a detector. Oh, because the alloy is made from something different, like, yeah. a, like a nickel or something. Or yeah, like, I found like that fucking out change. <clears throat> on one of those trips. So those pens don't go off. And they're better because they work better. They don't smell. You can do it in front of everybody. I mean, dude, you know just what? people just, it, it's coming. It's coming because I, I was going to, we were going to talk about that this week, but I'm going to wait a little bit longer because that is going to be a hot button over the next six months. What's this? Marijuana legalization. Ooh. Ooh, it's coming, go. baby. It's coming. And I hope it does it because, man, I just as saw being some, somebody I just saw that somewhere. grew up not taking Ritalin and not taking Adderall like I was prescribed to do. Was it, no, maybe not Massachusetts. I just saw somewhere that said they were going to allow um, everybody to sell weed. Good. Like you, anyone can sell it. You can. I can. We're not going to do it, though. Bob can. I mean, if he's not fucking trying to put his balls on your microphone or something. Yeah, man. Well, when you go into other states, you got to be careful or other countries, you know, oh, you, countries for sure. So, but like, you know, being on cruises and stuff, like you said, you, you went down to some places, you went to Hawaii, but what, <laughs> how crazy would it be? Like you've been to some weddings, right? Yeah. Bunch right, of weddings. Okay. Say you're at this wedding, you're drinking, having a great time. You're in Mexico. Having a really good time, you know. You have a good time in Mexico. I know you do. I've been to Mexico so many times. <laughs> and all of a sudden, these two fucking dudes crash the party. They come crashing the wedding. And you're a little drunk, so you're like, ah, oh, these fucking guys walking in. These guys. And it's Danny DeVito and The Rock. Ooh. All right. Where are we going with this, though? No, this shit really happened. <laughs> 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 fucking Danny DeVito and The Rock crashed a wedding in Mexico over the weekend. Wow. That's and then they like awesome. chilled and they like sang. And like it wasn't planned. 
They were just are chilling they do, are, they doing, uh, are they doing uh, Twins, too? Are they doing the, they just, a remake I of think Twins? They should be doing a remake of Twins. Yeah. But I think they just finished Jumanji, and we're doing the press tour. Okay. They're doing all that, and uh, they were apparently there, and they crashed this wedding. And, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They Jumanji. went in, and they were singing and dancing. Hmm. And Dan doing DeVito the in the new Jumanji? He is, huh? Dude, who do you want to see more? Who do you want to hang out with more? Uh, of Danny DeVito or The Rock? Yeah. Damn, that's a hard one. I mean, maybe ten years ago it was Danny DeVito. Probably The Rock. I mean, you kinda now get, it's The Rock. You kind of got to go with The Rock, right? No, no. I mean, if I you're mean, if you're like a real ago, if you're like a real big ago, if you're like a real big at Sunny in Philadelphia fan. Are yeah. you serious? What? What do you mean? Am that's I serious? It? That's it. That's all you're gonna give Danny mm, DeVito? No, no. I'm saying I'm saying right now, Danny current, currently, DeVito. currently. Because yeah, ten years ago I'd be Danny he, DeVito all the way. He but was the penguin, right now, bro. right now I'm like the Rock. He bro. was the penguin. Get the fuck out of here! My middle name is Rock. Why wouldn't I hang out with the Rock? Rock and the Rock, you know. The Bernie DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. You go hang out with the Rock. I'm hanging out. It's Bernie and DeVito over well, here. Well, you guys are losing your hair and you're shorter, and no. you know. And then I'll hang out with the Rock because we're fucking dope and you know dark skinned. Bernie DeVito. I'm not dark skinned. I'm tan. I feel like. It, it, nobody booed them. They walked out. Everybody was like, "It's rock. It's Danny DeVito." Yeah. Ah! There could be no excited. better. There could be no better gift like we were just talking about that could show up at your wedding, like the Rock and Danny DeVito walking in. Can you imagine if they just were like, people were like, "Get the fuck out of here." Hey, uh, did you have an invitation? Yeah, this is invite only. No, we only made fifty-five plates. There's only fifty-five people here. But we're the Rock and Danny DeVito. All right, then uh, I, I guess the, I guess the groom said he's gonna give you his plate because that's what I would do. I'd be like, "Is that the Rock? Are you hungry, bro? You hu- Hey, hey, Rock, are you hungry? Right that, here, take that's my what plate." I'm saying. So, somebody that did come out on stage that was not planning on it for well, the the crowd was not ready for it. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, and it didn't go like the Danny DeVito and the Rock. Uh, it didn't who, work. Who, like whose that. concert was it? It was Camp Flogna. I don't even fucking know who that is. That's Tyler the Creator, my friend. Oh, okay. Okay, now that I know was, who that, that is. Was Camp Flogna, Tyler the Creator, <clears throat> big festival, one of the biggest festivals. Okay. And never so heard of it. he had the whole roster up there, and then at the end he had question mark, question mark, question mark, and he always brings a guest. But for some reason, all I, his I, I crew, know the story, what you're talking about. They all thought it was going to be Frank Ocean. And for any of you listening to this right now going, who in the fuck is Tyler Creator, Frank Ocean? Well, you're going to know who the other guy is. But they are part of a, a rap crew. And, a label. Or an older rap group. And they, his Tyler Creators fans thought that he was going to bring Frank Ocean back out. Well, it wasn't him. And instead, he brought out Drake, which, you know, you're probably saying, well, Drake, that's the biggest, that's the yeah. biggest artist that there is. Everybody's going to be excited for that. But I think one thing you got to realize, so I'll finish the story, what happened? Well, so they booed him. They booed, they booed Drake. They booed Drake. The number one star pretty much Drake, in the world. Drake took it pretty lightheartedly, right? Yeah, he handled it well. But, but you, one thing you got to understand about that is that that particular genre of music, those fans of Tyler Creator and fake Frank Ocean are kind of like the like the al- alternative, you know what I mean? Like they're it's a different no, style that, of hip hop fans. That, so the fans that are the fans that go to those shows are the ones that don't like mainstream hip hop. So maybe they really felt this way but here's yeah. the problem with this culture it got famous oh, yeah, right, you so just got, you just got done saying it was at like a huge festival no 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 like it got famous like uh it got trending so yeah. like these dudes and these kids whatever girls guys whatever they booed drake drake mm-hmm. the under draker the under draker like fucking Nobody, bo- like, dude, I would be so ecstatic to see Drake on his worst yeah. day. Yeah. It would be cool. So, but they booed him, right? And what happened when they booed him? It made fucking headline news, all the all the blogs, everybody posted yeah, that they did this all, shit. Yeah, like you're saying, they're all kind of blown away So that in booed. a way, even though it wasn't like, my name is Josh Adams, and I was booing Drake, 
Josh Adams didn't get famous, but you know, Josh Adams can be like, "Hey, I was there in that crowd. We booed Drake. We yeah, booed I'm fuck part Drake. Of, I'm part of this we trending viral shit. thing that happened." And now it's becoming this thing because what was it? Uh, was it the national? Was it the nationals game? No, no, no. It was the UFC fight. It was the BMF fight, and oh, they yeah, booed yeah. the fucking president of the United States. Now here's the deal. Yeah. I've been I've been around for a short time, man. Thirty four years, not very long. But I've seen a couple presidents, yeah. a couple of them. Never, I, whether you hated him or liked him, because like there was a lot of people that didn't like Barack, which I didn't I didn't understand that. I liked seeing Barack. I enjoyed hearing him talk. Might well, he, not have he's, stood he's, for he's all one of the, he's one of the most well spoken presidents but, that we've ever but had for sure. You don't get the boobs, but you also like, don't you also don't go send and full drones of a, and to full go of blow a country up fucking innocent people of racist people. Right. Which, whatever, man, there are some racists out there. Yeah, for sure. There's everything. But they weren't even booing Barack. Like, they didn't even boo Barack. So, I mean, so so they, I'm sure so, some people were, but they, but, they didn't They didn't but, show up in this viral, this cancel culture is kind of what you're getting at. But that's the thing now, is that, like, okay, we made the news. We're fucking yeah. famous right well, now. What, what you're so kind of getting at is now? this cancel culture, this whole viral, like, trending tribalism of trying to shut people down for not being as perfectly neutral as you would like them to be did you see the the new one today melania no she stepped out in front of some high school kids to do a opiate crisis speech and before she even got started they started to boo her oh that's again, fucked up man she's again, trying to do something good this is the fucking the the first lady whether you like them or you hate them like if you hate them write some intelligent shit and she's easy to look at but they don't care they don't care, dude. Nah, All they want to do is they want to be like, "Hey, we were viral today because we talked shit to Melania right. Trump." But we're gonna, we're gonna. Everyone, boo wants, to, everyone Drake. wants to be influencers. Everyone Bro, wants to they, have a podcast like these but, two fucking idiots are here. But how scary would it be to be anybody famous at this point? Yeah, it's definitely because hard. now they have the power as a whole to say. I would imagine I can boo you. Like Joe Rogan is going to yeah. be here in a few weeks. I'm so fucking excited to go see his set, but. If half the fucking crowd decided we're going to boo Joe Rogan because he's shit on Arizona in the past and said he didn't want to come here, which I don't even know if he did, but I've heard that shit, but I, I never no, heard that. He, I never he, heard he, that. he had some issues. It's an old, old thing with Joey Diaz. They had some issues with like the owner of the Tempe Improv. That was it. Which is bullshit. We'll get we, him out of we, here. I think, we went and saw, I think we went and saw him last year with I found Tony out Hinchcliffe. The, that was a great show. I, I found out uh, I went and saw Theo. Uh, like a year or so ago, and I didn't remember. Oh yeah, you woke up singing in the back of a car. No, no, I went and saw. <laughs> <laughs> I went. I uh, I fucking. You didn't know who he was when no, you saw him. No, but I did though. That's the thing. Like, well, no, I didn't know when I saw him. But like, bro, I follow all Theo's platforms, right? I follow right. all this shit, and then like, I did, remember. Did you not realize it was no? Him? So we had some company come out, and they're like. Yeah, man, dude, you're the best. When I come into town, you always fucking take care of me. You always, last time, you, you took me out to fucking dinner, and we all went out, like, girl, and all of us went out, and we saw fucking Theo Vaughn, and I was like, huh? He's like, remember, you took us to the improv, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, my God, that was the fucking funny guy. It was fucking Theo Vaughn. That's great. And I didn't even realize it, dude. Like, And I follow Theo Vaughn on all this stuff. So shout out to Theo Vaughn, man. I'm sorry. I was a little too... Man, I saw... It was a good night, bro. I, I saw on, uh, Chappelle Must have had Lacey. that hitter, man. I'm sorry, man. I saw Chappelle Lacey open up, and then I saw him on like a YouTube video from like a Comedy Central clip or something. And I was like, hey, that's fucking the dude that we saw that opened up for... Like Paul Verzi and Bill Burr when I saw them, I think. Yeah, but how weird is it when you're like watching a clip from the dude and listening to his podcast for like a yeah. year, and yeah. then all of a sudden I was like, "We went and saw him. You got <laughs> tickets," and I Wait, was like, what? "Oh my god, that was the dude That's that funny. fucking. You're right. He was so funny. We even said it in the car. Like that dude was funny. The fucking the mullet dude and fucking. We didn't know who he was." It was mm -hmm. probably like two years ago now that I think about it, but yeah, that yeah. shit was that was crazy. So, um, <laughs> and and I, I don't got a whole lot today, but um, I just want to ask you because I know you kind of grew up around the same time as me. Is did you keep all your baggy clothes? Did did I keep them all? Had you keep some of them? I I never was like that. I wasn't that big into the baggy clothes. Not like super bagging, like not like fucking baggy baggy, but like baggy. Like, chewed up the bottoms of your pant legs. I never really had that, man. Really? 
Not really, no. I mean, I had I had some baggy shorts. Like I wore like the big like dickies oh, kind of yeah, a little bit. Oh yeah, it's Arizona. Y'all don't wear pants. I mean, I, I'm wearing pants right now. Yeah, but but they fit me. <laughs> Bro, you know it's coming back. They're trying to make baggy popular again, and I'm laughing because I still got some of the shit. Because you know it's it's like a seven year gap to New Hampshire. So like the right. shit, the trends are. Like, it's probably like four or five, but it's like seven year gap back in the day before the internet. So like. If you had baggy shit, when it went tapered, we were, I remember my sister saw me in some like tighter shorts one time, like acid wash, like ripped tighter shorts, but they were, well, they were pretty tight. Shorts? Yeah, they were kind of, they were kind of stretchy. But uh, she saw them and they were jeans. Yes, they were, yes, jorts. they were shorts. And uh, she saw them and she was like, you can't wear that out. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? Where this is my I New want. Hampshire sister. This is the one she just came out to visit and she's like, that's what a gay kid would wear at home. And I was like, what do you got a problem with gay kids for? Yeah, come on. And she's like, no, can, you, know, you know what I mean, though. And I was like, yeah, but Just can I explain? Way to, way to let the audience I said, know but do you know, sister. do you know what I mean now? Because now she lives out here and she understands. Right. But I was like, do you know what I mean now? Like, when we go out and you see that this is the fashion out here, and then... In five years, you're going to see the people back home kind of wearing this shit. She's like, they'll never wear that shit. I said, they already kind of do because some of them fucking redneck boys don't wear baggy shit. Yeah. They wear shit tight. It fits them. Yeah. I don't understand. But now they're trying to bring the baggy clothes back, and I still got some. I don't have no Jankos. <laughs> I did have a bunch of Jankos growing up. I really? wish I still had the Jankos. No, yeah. I had like one pair and I wore them like fucking one time and I was like, I can't fucking wear these things. Oh, bro, I had the Road Kills. I had the Lazy Boys. I don't know anything you're talking about. Oh, I had all the brands. I had like this two stripe down my leg. It looked like the road line. <laughs> I remember and then there was those. a dead squirrel on the on the leg. That I remember seeing those. I had those ones. I had, um, I can't even remember now. I'm getting yeah. old. I probably had like probably like six or seven different pairs. I of I mean, I rocked, I rocked like Dickie shorts and Dickies pants like a lot. Like you people know, got mad that those were like they were like sixty dollar pants, right? Sixty, seventy dollar, maybe eighty dollar pants. I don't remember back how much. Back in like they the nineties, yeah, they were expensive. But if you think about it, like if we cut that all down and we stitch some jeans, bet I bet you get two pairs out of them, bitches. <laughs> You probably get two pairs. I mean, you could probably get two pairs out of mine. I probably get two pairs. No, no, the ones that I had back in the day, if the wow. waist was enough to See, fit I never, you, I never wore shit like that. You didn't wear that shit. No, oh, man. Well, the baggy stuff's coming back, but unfortunately, like I'm comfortable with the clothes that fit me. Yeah, I like it. That's how I feel. Yeah, well, actually, I, was, I almost put on a pair of jeans that were a little bit tighter this morning, but I kind of like ate and drank a lot last night because today's my I'm off today and tomorrow, and um. <sighs> So I almost wore some that were a little tighter, but I had worn these last weekend and hadn't washed them yet, so they fit good. So I was like, all right, I'm going to wear these again. I'm going to do a selfless plug. Cause, <laughs> selfless, huh? Yeah, because, you know, they'll never pay me anyway. For all you people out there with bad feet, bad back, bad hips, whatever it is, but definitely the bad feet people, I've had fucked up feet my whole life, dude. Like, like my shit crushes. It feels like my toes are broken. My big toes are broken at times. And um, I have no arches in my feet. And it affects me a lot. And I've gone to the doctor. I've done a whole bunch of different stuff. And as part of kind of like a being cool and a fashion thing, I got into shoes. And a buddy of mine, Kobe Mack, um, got me on to some of the Adidas shoes. And he got me on to these. This is the Ultra Boost. Um, by Adidas and this foam down here was made by NASA for the astronauts and eventually got leased out to Adidas so Adidas did not make this foam now they have multiple versions I think they're up to like version 5 or 4 um, but the foam is always the same anytime you get this like cloud foam looking it's not cloud it's called ultra boost it's boost foam anytime yeah, you get the boost foam um Dude, this has cured my foot and back problem over yeah. the years. And my dad, I find, I bought my uh, my dad a pair, and he's been wearing them over the I last know, few days. I don't know a lot of people like with your like build, like size and stuff, that have a lot of foot and back problems. Kind of uh, interesting. Yeah, I've had a lot of issues. Like my feet yeah. have always been collapsed since I was little. So, um, but I had a big dude uh, down the street that I know that's about six two, two twenty, two thirty. 
Okay. And he's got plantar fasciitis, yeah. or whatever it's called. Plantar, plantar fasciitis. There you go. The fascia of your of the bottom side of your foot gets fucking pulled super tight. So basically, like I have early and signs swollen. of gout right now. Like that's where I get a lot of the issues in my foot. But these uh, these shoes, I'm telling you right now, they will cure you. Like it's hmm. the craziest thing to hear. They're not cheap. You know, retail they're 180. You can find them on StockX for 100, 110, 130. Maybe not the color that you always like, but you can look it up. I got my dad a pair the other day. He's been wearing them for about a week, and uh, I've been watching him. He put his other shoes on the other day to go do something because he knew he was getting muddy, and he was like, "Dude, they hurt. My feet hurt. My <laughs> back hurts. It's been less than a week." Yeah. So anybody that's having issues with your feet, go check out the Ultra Boost. Um, Send me a message if you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'll help you out with it. I'm sure yeah. we've been running super long right now. Super long one Coda's, today. Coda's probably ready to call it quiz. I'm like actually itching for another beer, but yeah, I can, I'm. What do we got? I got things I can go do. Oh yeah, hour fifteen. Yeah, I'm proud it. of us. It's a good one. It's been. I feel like uh, we got. I feel like it's been longer than that. We got a lot in in that hour fifteen. Yeah, no, it's right. it's been a good one. So I got uh, uh, I got Bob coming in on Friday. So we're going to have a Bow Back Bang Biscuits and a Bernie Dyke special. We're going to sneak that in. It's going to be... Uh, like a Bow Back Bang Biscuits. That's just, <laughs> what <you just> <laughs> a Bow Back Bang Biscuits. That that's, fucking came off the tongue so smooth, too. Uh, well, that's the guy. So, uh, oh, and so Robert will be here on Friday. Hey, um, fuck you, Robert. Yeah. And that goes uh, for the rest of you Roberts out there, too. I'm a... I'm a I'm going to get the foam out of here. There'll be no foam. We ain't got to worry about that. <laughs> He's got a five-foot touch rule for Dakota's <laughs> safety. I might even pull a different mic out just uh, in case. Yeah, give him a different mic. But uh, Piece of shit. unfortunately, Shayla couldn't make it out because um, she's got to work this week. And so happy Thanksgiving to you, Shayla. If you end up getting to the end of this podcast, I'm sorry you had nothing to do. Has she been, but, has she been listening to him? I don't know. Okay. Well, I, hey. I doubt it. Hey, Shayla. I, we're boring. But if you do... Thank you. And uh, when we do get a chance, I might just bring my equipment out to California and knock that podcast go. out out there. But uh, Bob's going to come in. He'll probably give us a little bit of a fill-in. Probably not. He'll probably just be fucking wild Robert. So Yeah. Then we also got another guest, hopefully on Monday. I don't want to drop his name yet. Oh, no, please. Let a him friend know. of ours, Let Jared Gabriel. If you guys got the time to go through and look up Jared Gabriel on Apple Music, look him up on Spotify. He already, com- he already committed to coming in next week, so, so I got to deal with him yeah, again. Yeah, we're excited because I like his music. Uh, I like that, like Dakota said in the last episode, that he's doing it all on his own and he's really busting his ass. So Yeah. Um, we want to, we want to promote that and we want to sit down and have a little conversation with him. And then who else we got coming in? Uh, I know Garrett wanted, Garrett wanted to come back. So Garrett from Wildcat Peak, we had a lot of fun with both of those guys and, um, Garrett. we're going to have another Wildcat Peak episode. Don't you worry. Yeah, uh, we're definitely, that's coming soon. But, uh, the fact that these goofballs work together and, uh, see each other enough that we're we're not work together, but work against each other. I had so many of my friends that were like, in the beginning of that episode, uh, we said something like work together and it was like, no, no, we work against each other. And he was like, yeah, fuck you, Coda. I had so many (laughs) friends that were like, how long have you known him? Like, I barely know him. They're like, dude, that was such a fucking funny episode. Bro, but I've gotten gotten some of the most kudos on that episode, actually. Before we even got started and he's like. Archer's on at five, so we can hurry this shit up. And I, was, <laughs> like, I don't even know what to say right now. This dude's like, fuck it, let's go. So um, We also got uh, Damien wants to come back on, Tragedy. He has taken an endeavor of uh, quitting his job and solely going off of music and his other little side endeavors, which is like he does some screen printing, some uh, some vinyl printing for shirts and stuff like that. I think like maybe stickers and other things like that on vinyl. Um, but yeah, so he quit his day job. Don't quit your day job, they always say. He did it. Done Dun did it. And he's pursuing his own solo endeavors. And uh, I just, I was just with him uh, the other week, about a week or two ago. And uh, I told him I wanted to have him back on. He said he would love to be back on. And we we're going to talk about how that's been going for him. So I said, let's wait another month. Let you let you be out there on your own for a little bit longer. And let's see how it's going. That way you can bring some new heat to the table that nobody's heard Bringing yet. The heat. He's working on stuff right now, too, right now. I know now. he is. I know he is. The kid, he's super ambitious. I'm happy for him. Um, I'm proud of him because it takes a lot of balls to do that. So 
Takes the you know. balls, boy. Hey, dude, if you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it. So don't don't be like other people, even myself, where you wait till you're in your thirties and you're looking back on, you know, I had my opportunity. Could've I didn't had, take I could have had three hundred podcasts by now. Fucking take that opportunity, <laughs> brother. You're doing a great job. We're proud of you. We love your music. Um we got a couple of to see you in on. the tank. Yeah. Don't wanna get talk and about Urban it yet. Smoke. I haven't talked to him quite about it yet. Urban Smoke, I'm calling oh, you out, brother. Yeah. Leo. Leo. Listen, brother, we're going to need to get urban smoke in here with the Coda and the Keegs, and that way we can get to the next level of smoke-tasticness. Yes. You know what I'm saying, my friend? Yeah, we need to get, we need to get you on, Leo. We, uh, he actually just moved. They just, like, sold a house or buying a house. I know. He's I been get busy. It. I get we're it. not shitting on you, brother. Busy. We it's mean a holiday it. season. We're excited but to we're gonna see you when you, you get here, bro. here. So, this is the end of episode 30. Shout out to all the Spotic. I almost said Spotacast. I thought you were going to say Spotify. All the Spotify fucks, all the Apple fucks, all you guys all out you fucks. here. I'm stealing all Dakota's fuck yous before we get out of here. Yeah, I, was um, pretty, I was pretty. I didn't do too many fucks today. No, so we've been good. Fuck, even I held it, it back. Yeah, I, man. I didn't even blow it out like I did last week, so or two weeks ago. So thank you for everybody that pays attention to the episode. By the way, my mom listened to the whole one. She she. She does pay attention. <laughs> she said, "Love you back at the end of the last one." All Love right. you, mom. Love you, everybody that's paying attention to this. Share this with a friend. Make their day. Keeks and Coda, out. Out. Peace.